order at 6.34 p.m. Uh, for tonight's meeting and discussion, it's a two-part meeting of our goal discussions, uh, identifying those goals and possible objectives and activities. Uh, Lisa has prepared a, a bit of a presentation, uh, kind of goes over a little bit more in depth on strategic planning and, and some of the items that we want to want to consider as we're developing our kind of term goals. So, uh, with that being said, we'll be pretty much focused on just term goals, uh, not, not so much long-term strategic planning to some extent. Um, but we, this is a good framework to kind of start those discussions with counselors. And then in our second meeting, I believe, if I'm correct, Lisa, this will be submitted to town staff, provide their feedback, and if there's any goals that align or any concerns or commentary, we'll kind of get that feedback at our meeting next week. That is correct. And also, if there's any particular staff that you would like here, if that's the council's de uh, desire, just let me know so I can, you know, plan on having them available um, or in, you know, in a Zoom environment. We could do that as well. Okay. I appreciate that. Oh, thank you. So with that being said, I will let uh, you do have your presentation up for the public to view. So you can go ahead and get that started. Okay. Sorry, everybody. Well, good evening, everybody. And um, tonight we are going to, I'm just going to give you a little overview of what strategic planning is. Now, as Councilor jo uh, Chairman Jones said earlier, just a little while ago, we're not going to get into a whole long-term strategic planning as far as going through and redoing a vision and a mission and all that. But I just want to give you an idea of what strategic planning is about and how it relates to the town's current vision and the town's current mission. I'm going to just quickly tell you what a vision and a mission is for those of you who may not be used to doing this. Um, a strategic plan is where all of us leaders, including yourselves, uh, work with the, the government, the local government, the staff, um, determines what you want in the future and how you want to get there. Like I said, it involves in, in developing a vision for the organization's future. And then you would set your goals, your priorities, whatever actions um, and strategies to achieve that future vision of the town. It's sort of like your roadmap to where you are and where you want to be for the long term. Vision statements usually and have been in, in Tallinn involve everybody. It would involve the public, it would involve the counselors, elected officials, state, all types of stakeholders, community. And it looks at what, again, the future of the community and where you want to be and how you want to achieve it. So it, set, it sets that vision for your future. So it, it would, one of the elements needed to form a forward uh, strategic framework that gives the councils and the boards a long-term comprehensive perspective necessary to make rational and, and tactical decisions um, when the community issues arise. The, the community visions are typically crafted through a collaborative effort. Mission statements are connected to the vision statements. While the vision statement excuse me, describes what you want in the future for the community or the organization, the mission to say, statement describes how that vision will be achieved. So ideally, mission and vision statements are crafted through a collaborative process that involves array of community stakeholders and elected officials, usually part of the entire strategic plan. What I have here this evening is Tallinn's vision statement. I don't, um, do you want me to read it out for the public for their? Yeah, yeah. Okay, all right, I'm gonna use this one. The Tallinn's vision statement, this was crafted back when I think it was 2000, the late 2007, 2008, something like that. 
This included an entire process. It took several months to go through. It involved the community, it involved the town council, just as I said, how a vision should be crafted. I'm going to read town's current vision statement. Community, excuse me. Town is recognized as a desirable community in which to live. Community means a sense of shared values accompanied by the willingness to ensure the safety, well-being, and respect of our neighbors and neighborhoods. The town provides efficient and high quality services in a fiscally responsible and efficient way. Residents' quality of life expectations will be preserved by the town continuing to promote a sound infrastructure and recreational opportunities and with an engaged citizenry committed to the betterment of the entire community, encouraging a balance among open space, residential and economic development, a town budget process that expands the community involvement and a progressive educational system that meets or exceeds the challenges of a common core of knowledge. Collins' mission statement is to enrich the quality of life of our residents and all we serve by providing cost-effective municipal services while optimizing resources. The core values of these statements that the town operates under is safety, well being, and respect. So all of that interrelates with each other. We already have our vision. So I, I was just saying here how you achieve it. First of all, you have your goals. You identify your goals. You set your objectives. The goals are, are results oriented. You have broad statements of policy or an intention to represent particular aspects of the vision. An objective addresses the desires and expectations. They are specific products or services that are needed to obtain your goal. A strategy would be the target or specific and realistic milestones to achieve the objectives. Then we create an action plan to carry out the strategy. The action plan identifies the strategy, who will be responsible for it, and the expected timeline of completion. As you said earlier, we're not going to be addressing identifying a new vision or mission this evening. But if that was something the council wanted to do, I just wanted you to make sure that you know it's extremely time consuming and it will take several months to have, a, to have a, an appropriate one. Yeah, sure. Uh, I'm sorry. Um, can you also during this meeting, give us, I can't give you any goals that we might have. I think I have a couple of things in mind. Can we yes, um, I'm, I'm breezing through this overview okay. and then we're going to get started on I it. Just then you'll brainstorm. That. Okay. Yeah. yeah no sorry. Um, <laughs> Thank you. But what I wanted to do was at least take our current vision. I took our current vision apart and took the words that were within the vision to try to at least highlight the, the upper level goals, identified the goals. So the goals that came from the vision statement itself are these items here, provide efficient and high quality services uh, in a fiscally re responsible and efficient way, promote sound infrastructure, promote sound recreational opportunities, engage the citizenry to the betterment of the entire community um, by doing, uh, encouraging open space, balancing that with residential, economic development and open space. So you have a nice balanced environment. Create a town budget that expands the community involvement and a very progressive educational system that meets or exceeds the needs. So those are the goals that I pulled from your current vision. If you're doing a proper, 
I say proper, but if you're doing a strategic planning process, you would be taking these goals and then setting your objectives based on these overall goals. Whatever you have in mind probably will link in one way or another. And, and um, it may not be exactly specific to those goals, but we'll get there. The one thing um, that is important to consider is the needs of the citizens. Where are we currently? Where do we wanna be? How do we get there? Just case you process that. And, and definitely need the support from up here. It starts with the council goes to me, I make sure it gets implemented. But it's important to have the support at the top. So if there's an uh, objective set or strategy, whichever way we, whatever we do, it's important to know that is it going to be attainable? Um, if, if there were something that you were going to suggest that's going to cost money, are you willing to stand by and support funding it? Um, so those are the things. You, you don't want to suggest things that you may not be, be able to achieve, whether financially or so forth. So those are the things we can discuss and figure out how we can make it happen or decide that it's not. So the important considerations here is that, you know, to brainstorm your ideas, get consensus, work together, try to prioritize what you all feel are your the most important things to address. This might be a little too much, but <laughs> um, there's a thing called SWOT analysis. What you're looking at is you're looking at the strengths that when you're, when you're setting your goals and, and trying to figure out how we're gonna attain them, you're looking at the strengths or you know, your supplies, your talents that you have in accomplishing the vision. You're, you're looking at your weaknesses of talent or, or what could impede the process from achieving those goals. You may have a bad te technological system for something that needs a high quality technology to, to make it happen. Um, opportunities are situations that can have a positive effect on town, town operations. Federal state funding is, a, is a considered an opportunity. Threats could be um, factors of anything negative, uh, an unfunded mandate. The state may say you have to have compliance with MS4 reporting requirements, which are for cleaning your storm drains, but they're not going to give you the money to do it. Um, so, so the important thing is when you're setting these goals or objectives, make sure they're achievable and realistic expectations. Um, ensure that there is sufficient staff if it requires staff to be involved um, or whatever resources in order to implement the plan. Excuse me. Once the goals and objectives are set, then, then you know, of course, what we have to do is monitor them, measure them, make sure that we're achieving where we want to be. So what I did here was I just took, I was just trying to give you an example to try to pull it all together. Um, some of you have done this before and some of you may not have. Um, I took an example of something that is pretty much um, a situation we have right now. In, um, in Tallinn, we have, we have to start planning for transition um, and employees, things like that. So if you go, you know, succession planning is what, what I'm talking about. So if you look under your first goal that I highlighted from the vision, provide efficient and high quality service in a fiscal responsible and efficient. <coughs> if you address appropriate succession planning and, and possibly I added another one, harness technology to deliver those services more efficiently. One of the things to do is to address employee retention. So I put that as an objective. This is just my example. You guys can obviously put what you want, but this is something that is affecting the town currently. We're trying to retain, attain and retain staff um, just because of the challenges that are out there. 
So once you set that, then, then one of the strategies I just threw out here was to complete a compensation review to ensure that the town is able to attract that type of staff and quality staff and addressing the succession challenge because as the workforce starts to age, there's some who may decide that they want to retire sooner than later or later, whatever. It's really important in positions, positions such as the town manager, the finance director, and any type of staff that is a strong support staff, you want to make sure that someone else can pick up in their footsteps because the talent out there right now it is just not available. So that is, I know that's certainly one of my personal goals is to try to make sure like the finance office is ready to move if, if it has to. Um, so that's just an idea. Another part regarding that goal, I said first strategy was to review current methods of service delivery, deliver, determine if there is a new technology that can deliver. Take a look at the tax office technology uh, for the ability to accept tax payments by credit card in-house. We do it online, but we currently can't do it in-house. And there were so many state laws that made it very difficult, but there's now there's ways to do that. So get the town finance director, that's it. Get the people that you want involved, the finance director, revenue collector, any type of finance staff that would be appropriate. Um, to review the various capabilities and feasible implement it by, and you put a date of where you want to try to implement it by. We're almost done. <laughs> there we are. So that just kind of gives you an idea of, um, you know, of the process. I think the important thing is to try to, if at all possible, try to stick to what the goals are of your vision statement unless you want to do something different that's you're the group you're the decision makers but i wanted to share the process for those who haven't now this evening i also included um last year's goals and and the um what got accomplished pretty much most of them were accomplished in one respect or another um also on another note, you know, the capital improvement plan has been submitted to you as well, and that's the other big packet that's at your seats for your reading pleasure. So, reading pleasure. Yes. So now, now the idea is to try to discuss where you want to head with this. Yeah. So with, with that being said, if you want to kind of open the floor to any counselors uh, that had thoughts, had inputs, I think uh, just as a reference. Um, for anyone who, who had to arrive a little bit later, I think it was slide, um, I think it was 11 maybe, or, or no, slide 10 out of 16 that kind of has those like the identified goals that um, are on the, on the screen right now, at least they're kind of mentioned that those might be good areas that as we're developing our kind of discussions of goals that they fall under those four categories, um, they would, that would be one way to help kind of fit them and have them in line with our vision. So if there is anyone who would like to, if you have any questions before we continue the process, uh, feel free. I know uh, Councilor Yudicek mentioned they might have a couple, but if you're going. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm new at this. Obviously, so thank you, Ms. Hancock, for putting this together for us. Um, I just one of my, I don't know how you go about this, but one of my things would be the facilities, proper upkeep of facilities. Um, I feel like some of that, um, we really talk about a lot, a lot of other departments and I think we should discuss more of that. I don't know what kind of goals we could set, but I just think it would be a good conversation piece if we could do that. Um, yeah, I have a few things, but I don't want to hog up everybody's paper. No, no, <laughs> I, 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 I would say if you have, I would say if counselors have two to three initial like thoughts right. that come off the the the, uh, the brain, feel free to express them and then as you go around, so we'll do uh, multiple rounds of discussion. So yeah, right, so that three. would actually fall under promote sound infrastructure, number two. Yeah. All right, so I'll give one more and then let, you know, go around choice, like you said. Um, <clears throat> 
I saw the firehouse projects going on. I'd like to try and complete, or the group trying to complete one, um, two of them by the end of that two years. I know it's a big project, but I think we could try and stay focused on that as well. The firehouse. Oh, yeah. Um, uh, rebuilding them. Oh, we're moving on it. Yeah. So if we could get them all done, that'd be fantastic. But at least they're trying to get a couple. I don't know how long will that take. It's going yeah. to take a couple of years because we do have to do it in um, pieces because you have to be able to store the equipment in certain okay. areas. Um, so what we're doing is the, the two new builds first. We're already underway with the design and all that work and, and moving forward with that. We'll be putting a bid together. And then the construction will be the following year, uh, the, re the improvements to the um, Station 140. Will be a, a separate project in the following year. Two years. There we go. Yeah. All right. Um, I have others, but I'll let other people yeah. might have the same. Council Luba. Uh, thank you. Well, I mean, this sort of actually plays in almost uh, <coughs> perfectly to a uh, uh, council uh, points where I think when we're looking at this, just sort of a, a general game plan, we need to make, make things that are achievable, measurable. And uh, that there's there's certain that we can have certain metrics to that we can measure the measure the achievements, set a timeline, and check to see how we are accomplishing things. I think that it's good to have the large scale goals where things that we'd like to see you know, are the overarching, like we have here, promote a sound infrastructure. But then from there, breaking it down and you know giving certain metrics and certain guidelines, but also. I don't want to get too much down in the weeds. I mean, as I say, you know, breaking it down in, in the terms that I'm used to, this is the 100,000 foot view. Then we want the 50,000 foot view of saying these are the general metrics. The lowest we should go is 10,000 foot view where, you know, set some general guidelines. This is what we would like to see accomplished, but that's what we have the department heads. That's what we have people where let them do the job, give them the ability, support them with, uh, with that, you know, with, with them uh, and, Give them the guidance, but don't get down to the nitty gritty where it's like you must use three eighths inch screws for no. these types of. No, uh, but I know I'm just saying that I know that you're. I'm not saying that for you specifically. I'm just saying that I've seen it where I've been in planning processes where you get people that are wrapped around the axle and they focus on what they know, and I'm I'm guilty of this as well. I, I focus on certain things that I know, and I got to step back and say, no. Look, you know, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta see the big picture, yeah. and let's give our people that are that know how to do this the ability to get the job done. So I think that's it. But the main thing for me is circling back around is we have to set set achievable goals with certain metrics to to so that, and then we're not just dealing with general esoteric goals um, overall. You like that word? I looked that up today <laughs> just for this. I'm so proud of you, <laughs> Chairman. Yes. Can, I just I just want to clarify something because when I was going through that presentation mm -hmm. and I got down to the minute areas of action plans and all that, oh, yeah. that's probably more of what the staff would be doing, right. but it is part of the entire process. So um, I hope I oh, didn't no. mislead no. anybody to think that you guys had to actually set how we're going to do it and all that. No, I, I didn't think that at all. <laughs> I'm just saying that, you know, just, okay. you know. Thank I'm you. just saying it because I want to make sure that we stay focused on, on our on our you know town council where we're like you said we're the hundred thousand foot view mm -hmm. and that we throw, that's where we really need to stay. So yeah, so it sounds like one thing you mentioned, we Council Luba is um, yes, that, as, a, as a part of our goal setting that we should probably have a, a general agreement amongst ourselves that this should be reviewed on a regular basis. Maybe trying to establish a specific time, like maybe if. December to January works through goals and set the goals. If we say, okay, we're going to similar to the fields and facilities agreements with the Board of Ed, we set the time frame within the December, January period, we go back to them, you know, this year and then or at the end of next year to kind of assess how they're going and make sure that there's no confusion or questions or problems. I think that that's something if that sounds correct. Yeah, no, that's exactly that's that's mm -hmm. exactly what I was looking at. Thank you. Uh, Councilor Reed or Vice Chair Reed. Thank you, Mr. Jones. So um, I'm going to take what Lou said and kind of expand on that because in my world, this this is great, but then people are going to start asking, what are you doing specifically? What are you going to do? And, and the things that I have written down are things that the town council should do. 
The first one I have written down, and it's it's personal to me, is last term I, I advocated to set up the, um, the substance use and mental health task force. That happened, and now for this term, uh, th that task force has been active. I'm on the task force, so for this term, one of my goals is get the uh, the chairperson of the task force on the agenda to talk to, to the town council, the full council, as to what we've been doing, and to make a recommendation. The first recommendation is ready to go. So. This is something that we need to be doing as a town council. To me, it's very specific. Uh, get uh, get uh, the task force chairperson on the agenda to tell us what the recommendation is, and then we can talk about that yeah. as a full council. And we can make a decision as to whether it's something that we're gonna do or something we can't do or something that we need to modify, whatever the recommendation is. So that, that was my first one. Um, and then I think we all can probably agree on the, the uh, crumbling foundations and the Thames Wells. Uh, we need to keep uh, keep that moving forward uh, as far as advocating at the state level. Uh, to, and to me, this is something specific that the town council does, not the uh, not the town staff. So I, I'm not the guy that's going to direct town staff to do anything. I I think the town council has its has its role. Town staff has their role. So. Um, to me, th this this document that Lisa went through is is um, is very good, and Lou said a hundred thousand foot view. Uh, I I like to have specifics and 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 get it. Like the task force to me is a very specific thing that the council can do, as, as well as uh, crumbling foundations and the tainted wells. Um, commercial development is, is something that I have on my list, and I know that there are people in town that some people are completely against it. Some people are, are strongly for it. So there needs to be a balance somewhere. And, and that's something that we can do as a council too. That's something that we can talk about and try to figure figure a way through. So those are the three three things that I started with. I have a couple you more four. back at this point. Oh, I think Councilor Kalusi had their hand raised, I think, and then followed by Councilor Nietzsche. But I was just gonna comment to sign up, trying to summarize your comments, Councilor Regan. So one would be, um, continued communications with the task force for a lot of recommendations as they're presented to the council. Uh, another is um, council focus on community infrastructure through continued focus on crumbling foundation issues as well as contaminated well issues that are ongoing. And then um, commercial development through you know ongoing collaboration with planning and zoning, um, the Fort County Economic Regional Group that we're a part of and, and other groups that can kind of help build uh, a more, more stable economic development plan for the town. Exactly. And with POCD. Yep. All right. So, sorry, this one, this one, I make sure I was getting that right for, for everyone. Um, so, Councillor Pelusi, followed by Councillor Nuccio. Thank you. Um, thank you, Lisa, for putting this together. It was very helpful. Um, I, I'd like to say that because this vision and mission statement is what, 13 years old and hasn't been looked at in years that it's probably not applicable anymore and it needs to be updated. And we shouldn't, I, I don't feel that it's appropriate for us to be looking at this as our current town's mission and vision statement, unless the town council decides they want to endorse it. I, I think there's a number of things that need to be updated with it. But um, I also wanna point out that you said you gave everybody the, um, uh, what was it that, you handed something out to the rest of the counselors. The, is it this five-year plan? Uh, yes, and we'll have to get that to you. If yeah, I, I think it's a little inappropriate that it, you know, you said here for your reference during this meeting and I don't have access to that document. Well, it's not for this meeting. Um, it, it was just handed out because it was due this week, but it's okay. certainly not for this meeting. You, you referenced it as part of this meeting though. So um, I'm feeling a little left out at the moment. Um, so the, um, I, I agree with what you mentioned about a succession plan. It's very important. Um, response and recovery to the pandemic is very important. That can probably be folded into some of the others um, that have already been discussed. Um, completion, successful completion of the town manager search, of course, is vital to us. I do think we need a strategic plan with a community needs assessment. I think that needs to come quickly. Um, we, need, we need to have the data on what our community needs. And we've already identified some of that. 
Um, we've already identified through crum crumbling foundations, the well issues that um, some of our residents are unfortunately experiencing. It's, you know, some of the other community needs were, are being addressed through the substance use task force and um, some other commissions that we've created. So, you know, support of them is important. Um, and to add to Steve's list of things to help with economic development, of course, we have the tourism um, in the Ag Commission. Both of those, the Ag Commission had a meeting last night and they're looking at, you know, like farms and ag tourism. So that's, that can be huge for us. Um, so, but, but my top, if I had to pick um, one thing to do, it would be a strategic plan with the community needs assessment, and that would include creating a new mission and vision statement. All right, thank you, Councilor Lucy. So, yeah, so just to make sure I, I kind of have that, uh, at least in my notes, and I know Lisa, both Lisa's are taking studious notes. So potential review of the current vision statement that's in conjunction with the strategic plan needs assessment. Um, the town manager search completion. And I felt there was one other, but I wasn't sure if it was folded into some of the other comments or if it was a distinct goal. It, it mostly is folded in like the, um, you know, obviously the community needs is the, we've already identified the crumbling foundations, the well water, the substance use and mental health task force, things like that. Um, you know, again, response and recovery to the pandemic would be part of community needs, I think, assessment. Um, the succession plan might actually also be part of the strategic plan. Um, you know, it's so much of this supporting documentation for how important these things are can come from our strategic plan with the community needs assessment. Thank you, Councilor. So now, Councilor Nuccio, and then I'll go Councilor Khan after, and then we can do a second, another round of additional goals. Thank you very much. Um, so when I look at at this year, um, I understand the premise of how we're getting it, looking at the vision statement and that, and you know, we may want to look at the vision statement to see if it's meeting everything that we need. But my issue with with what we have right here is just that I don't see a lot of this as measurable. So when we say efficient and high quality services in a fiscally responsible and efficient way, um, what exactly do we mean by that? Like, how do we measure that? When we say promote sound infrastructure, what does sound infrastructure mean? Are we talking about, you know, a review of the infrastructure? We know the firehouse, you know, we have the schools and all of that. So what exactly does it mean with promote sound recreational opportunities? Um, and then in the engaging of the citizens there, expands community involvement, what does that mean? Like, are we saying we want more people on boards and commissions? Are we saying we want more people going to events? I'm big on not putting anything down that I can't say, as John said, this is what I'm doing. Like, here's the goal, you know, this is what we're saying. Like, if we were to say, promote something about infrastructure, we're updating the fire department, we're updating, you know, these fleet machines, uh, Cars. We're, we're actively looking at the turf field. We're looking at the sidewalks. To me, it's, um, this is all just mm -hmm. really, it's just vague. It's not, it's not measurable exactly. to me, right? So um, I know as you get down through what you're doing, you have the goals and then you have, um, I think the objectives were next, right? Is it right. The, the objective next? Or? So, right, so for example, it, it, um, I have on, on the screen for everyone to see. You have your high level goal from your vision. You're right, it's it's very all over. You can go anywhere with that, as long as it's addressing how are you gonna get efficient and high, quali high quality services? Well, one way is to make sure you keep people who are talented or hire people who are talented and make sure you're covered so that if you're, say if you have a very efficient operation, but then, <coughs> Somebody leaves. Now you're starting all over again. Um, and you know if they're leaving for a reason that they're maybe getting a better job somewhere else. I'm just using this as an example. But if they're they're making more money somewhere else or better benefits, then maybe it's time to look at that to say how do I keep these people 
that are doing a great job. And I may need to look into this or how do I train that person, that next person who may move up to finance director, let's say. You know, these are some of the things that, you know, as, um, as the workforce starts to age, it's, it's happening all over. We, we've got to start planning to be able to keep operations moving and at a high quality. So yes, the, the goal, you are correct, is, is way up there, but that's where you start with your objectives. So now you're, the objective is, as an example, um, address succession planning. Then, and this is where we were talking about getting down to action plans and things like that. So you would then set a strategy of do a compensation plan or, or however. You may leave the strategy up to the department heads to work out that strategy and for accomplishing it. If, if you're saying your, your overall objective is to um, prepare for succession planning or address appropriate succession planning. So if that is your objective, then, then possibly this is where we go after that with the staff that you charge it to. And there is where it would become a little more measurable because you would, if you, if, for example, in this situation, if you're losing 10, 15 employees, let's just say, once you start hiring people and doing things to keep them, you find out, first of all, why you're losing those people. Are they just retiring and they're done? Or, you know, so, so you try to find out, you get that information, but then you start building your plan to address the reasons why, if you can. Again, it has to be measurable. It has to be something that would be supported. As I mentioned earlier, top down, whatever your goal is, if there's something that you want to do and it's going to cost money or needs support up at the legislative level, whatever that case, we have to make sure that we're all working together and be able to figure out how we're going to make sure it happens and that it's successful. You may go through a whole um, planning process of compensation study, change benefits and all that, and still lose people, then what? You, you know what I mean? So that then it's showing, oh, well, guess what? That didn't work. Find out why. You know, it's it's a constant, you're in, you're in that circle. You identify, plan, strategize, and go. So from my perspective then, my when I came, when, when I was reviewing all this and that, and I'm thinking about my goals, mm -hmm. um, what I want to see in the next two years, I always look at myself as I'm a representative of the people, right? So mm -hmm. I'm here to represent what their needs and wants are. So for me, my goals are accessibility, development, both on a tax base that helps the people and development of um, the staff resources, because I know succession planning is a, is a thing that we need to really have some serious conversations about. Um, doing all this in a fiscally cognizant way, because no matter what you say, no matter what, who sits here or that, what we always hear is that the taxes are high and it's harder and harder to live here. So being able to do this in a fiscally um, cognizant way and increasing engagement. So all of that stuff to me, like a lot of the stuff that we're talking about, the foundations, the wells, that all falls under development and everything else, the, the mental health and the Commission on People with Disabilities, that's engagement and accessibility, um, you know, commercial development, that's being fiscally cognizant, looking at um, the town manager search, that's helped with development. So I try to keep it down to, you know, what do I want to accomplish in the next four years. So I don't ever, I think I don't ever really go as high as this because I can't measure any of this. I can measure whether or not we've increased accessibility. Um, you know, I can measure whether or not we've increased our tax base and development. Um, I can definitely measure whether or not we're fiscally conservative or cognizant. And the only one that I struggle a little bit with is engagement, being able to actually measure that. But I do think 
we've seen a lot of engagement in the town and events and stuff. And we've definitely put them in the commissions. We've got the veterans. There's a lot of engagement with that. I think we've done a really good job in the last two years of getting people more involved and engaged. That's that's kind of mine where we're on that. Based yeah, no, yeah, but, no, 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 thank you, Councilor yeah. Gucci. I, I think you added a couple in there um, that may, might fall under at least kind of the that slide was more like the base level of, yeah, what we would probably put our goals might potentially fall as like a catch all in terms of infrastructure. Yeah. As an example, I saw, I remember you mentioning sidewalks and artificial dirt fields. So that might fall under kind of that long term, but also the two year goal of our sound infrastructure that, you know, the artificial turf field is probably going to be a decision we'll be making within this capital budget cycle, or at least within our terms, mm -hmm. what that long-term plan is going to be, and simultaneously having those ongoing discussions with the HDC, Historic District Commission, and the Commission on People with Disability about the sidewalk. So, right. so they kind of fall into that, that notion of our vision-based goals of sound infrastructure. So it kind of creates maybe from the, from the uh, slideshow, kind of like a, a goal slash strategy of how we're going to maintain a sound infrastructure. Yeah, I would just say if, if these end up kind of being our goals, I'd love for us to kind of solidify, like when I go through this and say, no, promote a sound, yeah. promote a sound, you know, um, expand community involvement or efficient and high quality, you know, what's efficient and high quality to me is probably most Different definitely quality. what's yeah. efficient and high quality to you. So how do we measure that? So I would hope that we can maybe kind of yeah, no, firm I, up the wording a little bit. Yeah, so I, I should clarify. So yeah, this was not meant to be like, we already have the goal set out and you guys all right, have to right, figure right. out where you're sitting. It's more so just a, a help, as far as helping kind of stoke the conversation yeah, absolutely. and establish our own, similar to the document that actually I think myself or Lisa posted in the chat that shares how we kind of laid out our 2019-2021 our goals yeah. that kind of helps build upon that. Councillor Luba? Actually, sorry, yeah, uh, Councillor Khan. Yeah, for the first time, and then Councillor Luba. <laughs> this is my first time. And my vision for future is I'd like to see more businesses in town to get the business community together and easy to work in town, easy for the, make it easy for the new businesses. Like there's no red tapes, there's no there's no negativity. You welcome everybody and it's like you know what? Come on in Thailand. It's a new uh, new game in town. And come in and let's uh, give a shot. And if it's what about fourteen thousand to fifteen thousand car pass by from ninety-five to forty-four, and they say open open space everywhere. To try to get the message out. Talent is looking for business. Let to see more. I know it's, it doesn't make much difference into taxes or whatever it is, financial wise, but it's like it's more something for every, everybody. If it wins in, I think. Number two is like uh, more services for the residents. Of talent. Just to give you a small one example, I don't want to go into deep, but one example like a fire department. Fire department is only open for business from 6 30 to 4 30, uh, 6 to 4. And after that, it's like it's all volunteers. But the business, what the services I'm getting out of it. Between this, besides those two hours, everything is volunteer. We got the money to expand expand the fire station, uh, maintain them. We didn't maintain them for the last twenty years, so that's why we are ending up spending a lot more money into it. But if we don't have the crew, with the point of spending more money on uh, station one forty or whatever it is. I even don't know, but it's like, what's the point of spending money over there? Why don't we keep one and uh, put a stop over there? So you know what? I'll be safe. At least I can feel safe that uh, it doesn't matter 4.30 at night or 5 in the morning. I know that 
somebody will be at my, at my house with a good shop or ambulance or whatever it is. So I don't have to depend on AMR from Manchester. They are running out from all the way down from here to here, 17, 18 minutes by the time I'll be that. So you like the safety. I mean, that's the things I want, I like to see in the future. Thank you, Councillor Khan. That, that is a good comment, especially I think I saw recently on, I think either one of their posts on social media that they've already well passed 60 to them. Uh, Lisa, if you know what, what the, that number was, but it's already well exceeded previous records. Some reason I think it was over 2,000. Yeah. I think it was 264 or something like that. Like, yeah, you know, like it's already been a record, record setting year. And I think from our past conversations, it's been an ongoing increase in, I think, based on our safer grant discussions. So I think that that is, that is a really good point, Councillor Khan, in terms of if we're going to go through this long term infrastructure process for our firehouses, we also need to have the human capital as a part of that infrastructure. Yeah. I mean, volunteers, we got so many volunteers, but that's a good thing. But it's like, it's, you know what? Can I count on volunteers? Can they be there within a certain time? If my if I have a fire, it's like seven, 15 to 17 minutes, that's way too late. My house will be burned down or everything else. So it's like, what's the point of uh, getting a fire truck after 17 minutes to uh, put down the ashes? So like, and if I have a heart attack or whatever it is, I'll be dead within a 10, 15 minutes, whatever it is. So what's the point of uh, what we are paying for? No, that's fair. Thank you, Councillor Khan. Um, so a second time to kind of go around. I think Councillor Luba, you had your hand up, and I don't know if I saw anybody else's that was up yet. Right. Thank you. Um, yeah, I mean, I think just sort of uh, focusing in, and I think that there's all great comments here. I think um, sort of building upon what we have is taking, identifying the or the three or four, or even five at the most major goals, and then working on developing the objectives underneath there and setting three or four objectives underneath, underneath each one of those. That way we could get the, the big view. Then we could get down to the granularity that, that we've been looking for um, to some degree without actually dictating how, uh, you know, how things should be done. Just saying these are the, these are things that using uh, Council Yurichek's uh, example is I think I think I still think it was great is saying that we're working on firehouses so we be under sound infrastructure. Objective number one would be have two firehouses built within the next uh, two years or at least a groundwork. So that way it's something measurable. It's that way it meets our main goal, but then we also have something uh, some measurable objective. But again, we can't get eight different things underneath one of our goals. It's got to be two or, like two or three. At the most, we have to keep a span of control, something, you know, something manageable. I think um, that uh, I and I agree with uh, the issues of having uh, providing services. I think it's something, but there's some. I think that we also have to take a look at. There's services and there's things that we need, but we also need to identify it, keeping it within within the budget, within within a certain budget, because otherwise, we're talking about. How we want to promote business, we want to talk, we're talking about how we want to provide services, how we want to do this, but at the same time, by if we go too far above budget, if we go something where it's going to be that we're now looking at a significant mill rate increase, that we're not going to be promoting business because businesses aren't going to be wanting to come here if their tax rate are too high. And that, you know, so I agree that there's a, it, we have to take a look at things, but we also have to try to balance it out. We have to take a look at what you know, not necessarily what we can't afford, but what we really you know. What are our core core goal things that we want to accomplish? And let's take a realistic look at the budget. I would love to be able to fire hire a full time fire staff, but we can't do that. We just don't have the manpower. We don't have the funds to do something like that. That I would love to expand certain things. I would love to be able to do a lot of different things. But we have to take a look at what we can afford, what we can do, and what we can get accomplished with within within a certain limitation. I think looking at expanding our fire services by three to five people is something that that again that's something that we can accomplish. We could start out, and we could then it's measurable. We could see what the uh, see what we can accomplish by increasing a certain amount, 
And then seeing later on down the road, okay, is this something that we could then expand on? With education, same type of thing, we could take a look at, okay, where are we, you know, we, although we can't get involved in the budget, but we can at least take a look at some of the things that the, uh, that the uh, school board has set forth and see how it measures out so that when we're taking a look at that, as far as other town services, I think it's a matter of identifying what are, and again, it ties into uh, Councilor Peluzzi's position, getting, uh, seeing what the goals are and seeing what some of the, uh, some, some of the desires of the town people are, a resident, and then focusing on that and saying, okay, well, what are these core things with the wells? Okay, what can we accomplish? What can we, what can we do? How do we get that done? So I think there's a lot of things. I just think that we need to keep it within a reasonable span of control and a reasonable budget. Because if we had unlimited for both those, then we could create a utopia. But you know, we have to be realistic. Thank you, Councilor. But actually, I didn't actually go get to make any of my comments. So yeah, well, sorry. Go ahead, yeah. So um, I think one thing I'd like to actually take back a little bit on the increased engagement that Councilor Nuccio mentioned. I think this might be going granular into the policy basis, but um, I think even tonight, as an example, two years ago when we had our goal setting session, it's almost two years to the date. Yeah. It was literally only us versus tonight. We have several members of the public and the press available here. So I think going back to as, as the pandemic kind of eases up and we can return to our business, I think the remote participation policy I think is one area that, that we should kind of on a, on a strategy basis and also perhaps asking boards and commissions, including our own to kind of review on a regular basis, what our attendance has been like this compared to other meetings. I know we don't necessarily have the clerk track who is and who isn't in the room, but just kind of having an idea of that. Um, another goal of mine that I feel uh, would be great to uh, be cognizant of is ARPA. I think we should have successfully implemented and executed majority of those funds. I believe the timeline is by the end of 2023 or 2024 mm -hmm. that those funds need to be expended. So I think within the time, the time frame of the council, I think we should expect to have those as a part of that recovery and rebounding of, of the community by uh, designating where those funds are going to go, whether it's for infrastructure or for you know any grants or whatever the ARPA subcommittee presents to the council over time. I, am, uh, I think it's, it's extremely beneficial for us to go through that process because every step of, of that use of the fund will uh, benefit the entire community. Uh, so with that being said, I think I have a couple more, but I'm going to Councilor Reed out or Vice Chair Reed out. Go ahead. Very good, thank you. Uh, so I had three more, two of which have been covered now, ARPA funds and succession planning. Uh, the one thing that I really don't think about much, but is critically important and we don't really hear a whole lot about is maintaining our AAA bond status. Uh, I think that's critical because that allows us to, when we need to bond for something, it, it, it gets us a, a lower rate and it, it's, it's more cost effective for, for the entire town. So maintaining that AAA bond status, I think is critical and it's something that's really not talked about. And it's something that, that can uh, happen through, I think it can happen through the budget process as long as we're uh, uh, putting forth a budget that, that can be passed at referendum. Uh, I, I think uh, maintaining that uh, AAA bond status is, is important. Ed. Okay. Thank you. One, one of the things with maintaining the triple, several things with, uh, with maintaining the AAA bond status has to do with a lot of your other goals. Um, for example, working on economic development, increasing the businesses and, and commercial development in town, broadening your tax base. Um, that's, that's one of the things these rating agencies look at. So that's addressing in the AAA status or helping keep it. Um, the other thing is strong financial management, making sure your budgets are passing, but making sure you're, you're taking care of your needs, paying your bills, um, providing the services that you need. So that, that's another area. Um, so those are some of the things that contribute to, um, to maintaining the AAA bonding. So there, it's like a side effect of those other things. Um, having a strong workforce, um, controlling costs, planning for disasters, planning for emergencies, making sure you have sufficient reserves. So all of this can get to that. And that's why it's so important. And, and that, if, I, if, I'm not, if I'm not mistaken, I think Holland is sort of unique in that respect. I, I, I'm, I'm not sure how many other towns in this general area have a AAA bond rating. There's not too many in the state. I mean, there are some, 
And what is unique to Tallinn is that we don't have a lot of commercial development or economic development in that area. And normally when you're being rated in a bond rating, they're looking at your financial management, they're looking at your leadership, they're looking at how your, um, your grand list grows, they're looking at your commercial development, economic development, all those things. And we're lacking in that area. And it's certainly something I'm focusing on, no matter how long I'm here, I'm, I'm trying to focus on it. But what has saved us is our prudence and our um, strong financial policies, our financial management of how we controlled our budget, set our reserves. Um, the last rating that we got, I was told that we had the highest financial management rating for the part of the, the rating process in the country. We were one of the highest, which I'm happy to, you know, to hear that because obviously we're doing things right. But that all plays part of it. Right. So, so th this is a pretty broad goal, maintaining mm -hmm. that AAA bond rating, but there are there are things that we can do as a council mm -hmm. uh, throughout the budget process and, and to really sort of to meet that goal. Yes. And, and yep. Thank you, Councillor or Vice Chair Regan, uh, Councillor Colusi, and then Councillor Yuchek, and Councillor Khan. Thank you. So um, I, I just want to expand a little bit on taking a look at the what the community needs are. It's it's also taking a look at the services that we provide for the community and what the services the community is looking for us. When we take a look at that, those services that the community needs, we need to prioritize them and we need to figure out how to deliver them um, if we can. Obviously, there might be some needs that the community has identified that we might not be able to deliver, but it's not just within town. It's also, you know, we need to do some partnerships, obviously, like the four town um, community and um, taking a look at other areas that we can maybe get services. Um, to our community through, you know, private partnerships or um, building relationships with uh, neighboring towns, et cetera. So I, I, I think we need to first prioritize identifying the services that are needed, I, prioritizing the list of services and how we can deliver them if we can. Um, we keep talking uh, uh, about the budget and, Yes, it's very important, obviously. Part of the prioritization process is to identify those that can fit in the budget, right? Um, and if we can deliver them within the budget. But if we're constantly talking about the budget, it seems that we're putting the, that need in front of the services that the residents need. And the services, I believe, should come first. And we work our way down through the budget after we identify the services that the town needs. Thank you, Councillor Colusi, for Councillor Uticek, followed by Councillor Collins. Uh -huh. Thank you, no worries. <laughs> yeah, there's officials everywhere. Um, moving back to the firehouse. Um, sorry if I'm not 100% sure, but is, are we doing a building committee like Birch Roses or not? I don't believe so. Um, yeah, please, if you want to clarify, I think it's being handled more internally between okay. uh, the public safety department and another department in the right. offices. Um, it is being yeah. handled internally. There will not be a building committee okay. such as the Birch Grove. The Birch Grove was a much larger, more intensive project. These, um, the, the two buildings that are going up are almost, uh, they're, they're, they're more of a design build type structure. So that it's not as much involvement with, with that process where much of it is already in place of how it's going to proceed. Um, there, there is an internal committee working on it, the, myself, the fire department, uh, chief assistant chief, uh, Marshall, fire marshal, Scott Lappin, our public works director, our uh, town engineer, there, there's a group involved. We get together, we meet, we discuss all of everything that's needed um, and to stay within the funding source for that. Um, 
And then when I said like the facilities, I meant like us are just going to include trucks, 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 or I, yeah, sorry, I didn't, right, I didn't really give, I just said facilities, but I meant public works, fire trucks, I know it's the fire department. Um, and then the big thing is the town manager. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's a very important and measurable thing we can all do together. And I agree with the other community issues, um, the wells, the Crumlin Foundation, trying to help the community as far as do the best of that taxes. Um, I agree with CMA on things as far as the fire department. I do have concerns as well throughout the night that there's nobody really there. I think our volunteers are excellent, so they really do their best. And, uh, I think that's something that's part of safer grant too, that they'll be their hours will be later. Right. They'll be extended not all night. And um, no, but it'll provide for more shifts, shifts and yeah. stretch it out. Um, but I guess we don't get a fair yeah. time. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Let me just look over the floor. Why don't you have the floor? It's yours. And see if you have it up. Right. <laughs> if you want to go ahead. <laughs> Everybody's talking about, oh, I guess. I think you said it a little more council. Yes, uh, so we're, all, we're all family here now. Right, great. Right. So, how many goals like are we trying to get? Like, we have so many great ideas or concerns for our community, and that's why we're all here. Like you said, Tammy, we're here to represent our community. So, is it five goals or three things under each, or we just have, because right now we have like what, 10, 15, or whatever? So, we got to group, get them down. Work that out tonight to be here until like 10. Oh, no, 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 I know Council Luba is saying we're family, but not that. Not that. Yeah. Um, no, no, our, our, you our know how family gets on your nerves every now and then? <laughs> our, our okay, last, I have had yeah. something brought in. Yeah. Yeah. No, I would say this is a comparison, uh, Council Luba. Our 2019 21, 2021 goals are about 818 goals. I believe you number them out, and I think some are removed or added as time went on, at least on the document. Um, a, across a, one, two, three, okay. four. It was, it, was, it was across six kind of categories and some had three some had five you know on average they had at least two i think the community events only had one and i did post that link in the chat probably missed it um, yeah i got it yeah. this one was kind of how we did it yeah no this is great came up with that. yeah so, so i think that's what we're, we're hoping to achieve is if we can create a handful of high level categories and then create achievable measurable goals under each category mm -hmm. um, but that won't be completed tonight this is more kind of getting the workshop session and process okay. getting the feedback from town <laughs> staff and then uh, hopefully solidifying those goals i think we were trying to kind of break out that four out four and a half hour session we had two years ago into two separate council meetings so that you know on average two to two and a half hours at most three session kind of helps us build consensus um so that answers part of your question. No, it does. Um, I think that's all. I don't have any else. Flip it down. Okay. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Yeah, no, no, it's all good. Down, um, <laughs> down <the damage>. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I think that's all I have for now. Okay. And then, Councilor Khan, do you have additional comments or? No comments. Okay. <clears throat> And if, if you can, actually, someone did reach out to me just as a quick point of order. Someone said it's a little bit difficult to hear you. So if you're able to speak clearly or closer to the microphone, that might be good. I guess there's some trouble hearing on the recording. Okay. I'm good. I like it. <laughs> now I can chat. My, I've been in Thailand for about 18, 20 years. The only thing I've seen in that timing is the big Y. <laughs> I haven't seen anything else. Everybody knows me at the gas station. They come in, they make a comment, whatever, whatsoever. So only I'll ask you a question. What's the Thailand is famous for? Sammy's ice cream. <laughs> okay. no. No. About 10 times a week, maybe more. 
Where is the electric blue? That's number one. Okay. I'm not saying that's a good thing, but that's a fact. And obviously, big Y. We have a big Y. It's a great for the for the community, and I like it. I personally, I do local shops local. But my only thing is. Fire department cannot achieve the whole staff within a within a month or two months. It's a long time. The only thing is like as a taxpayer, if I'm not, I don't if I don't feel secure, what's the point of me paying a tax for what? My kid doesn't go to elementary school, my kid doesn't go to high school, my kid doesn't go to X, Y, Z, whatever. I'm just saying that it's not something, everything is good in Thailand. I like that. It's a peaceful town community. I love it. But the safety, where the safety is? I haven't seen anything else. We have money for, we have money for the ambulance for every new, new, every year. We have the money for that. We have the money to improve, uh, to build a two new fire, depart fire department, which is going to be empty. And they are empty right now, and they're going to be empty for, for the future, for I don't know how many years until we occupied with the shop. Why can't we build one, just one, Mallow, Ellington, just one, to start with one, at least, the residents will know my, if I have a something, the ambulance will be there, a fire department will be there, at least somebody will be there to assist me, rather than waiting for half an hour for outside, outside of. It's not something that I'm saying that is going to happen overnight. And honestly, in my opinion, I'm a small business. I don't depend on the banks. I've been 18 years, 20 years. The way I built up my business, I made it, invested, made it, invested. Triple A rating means best to me, honestly. Good, it's a good thing to have it on the side, but Triple A means best to me. The reason is, the reason is I'm not secure. I'm not secure. It doesn't matter how much money you're going to borrow it. I'm not, I will not be secured. Because if we stop or department, uh, anybody, I'm just giving an example. It's not going, I'm going after fire department. I'm not. I'm just giving an example. I just want to be secured and I want more services in Thailand. That's my, that's my achievement. That's my goal is for two years, four years, but it's not something that uh, I'm looking for uh, some, is going to happen overnight. As long as it's in budget, as long as we can add the residents of town approve it, I'm in. Thank you, Councilor Khan. I, I, I think it might be a little bit clearer now, so now I think you were picked up on the mic, so. Okay. <laughs> um, so one, one comment I think I want to make is that um, just before we go around for, for another session, um, I do think it is uh, beneficial that we consider, I think, if we can go forward with the safer grant, which is a more policy based discussion. But as we kind of review and assess the needs of the community, if we go through that process, maybe understanding that long term goal of can we make, can we start with one fire station being 24 7 operated, that there's at least one fire station that is potentially available. But I think that's a, that's a, that's a good point of starting that, to make that conversation. Um, and I think going back to that kind of strategic planning or maybe re readdressing our vision. Um, I would definitely have an interest in exploring that avenue, but really not until we have a new manager and that they're well solidified into the community to kind of address that topic. Because I think it's it's great. I think when I spoke with um, SGR, they kind of talked about managers like to come into a community where there's a lot of opportunity. So I think that would be an area that you know we could say the town council has been considering wanting to redevelop their vision statement for the community and get through that community process. 
that would help get them involved and engaged in the community, learning more about the needs of the town and also get their input and also increase increase engagement in the, in the community. So that's just my perspective on you just kind of brought up that that's part of the goal in terms of uh, if we do go forward with wanting to reassess the vision. Um, but Councillor Luba, if you want to, if you want to go next, actually, sorry, apologies. Councillor Nuccio or have you spoken a second time yet? No, not yet, but I probably will. Okay. Right, well, uh, thank you. Uh, no, I, I think you you summed up uh, you know my thoughts exactly. Is okay. that this is something where you know it, it, that's, that, that we could take a look at it. I think it's something, and again, I agree. I mean, I think it's something that people need to feel safe and that they need, need to feel secure. We just need to assess that, and we need to take a look at, at the real, you know, how the best way to get that accomplished is. I know that in talking with uh, Chief Lightsell, and not to like not to focus on on, on your position at all, but. There's a reason why we have these fire departments around the town because it's a huge town. And having been a for, former volunteer myself, volunteer fireman, I know that you need these different places that may be sitting open except for the times when you need them when you need them to call, because it's something that's local. Where rather than going everyone here at Station One, where it'll take you 20 minutes to get across town, you'll have one that's two minutes away. So I think that's something that we need to take a look at and see and and. I trust, you know, that's one thing where I trust Chief Vitel on taking a look at an assessment on it. I think that you summed it up exactly uh, uh, as far as taking a look at it overall. The one thing that if I, I mean, I haven't set any specific goals for, uh, as far as what I'd like to see. My overarching goal, and there's only one that I really thought, it's economic development. We need to find a way to build our businesses here, that we need to be able to take the tax burden off of our residents, that we need to find some way to be able to promote talent so that we are a business friendly place. Well, and while also recognizing, because trust me, I've never learned, I've never heard so much discussion about any issue until we started talking about just, you know, the sidewalks. I mean, that was something where I was not ready for the discussion that, that built up from that. When we brought that issue up at the end of our at the end of the last term, and just having family, uh, you know, my wife's family who's lived here in Talon their entire lives, I mean, Papa T's and all the different businesses and everything else, and where you need to try and balance that what people want, which some of the older like you know, old time residents want, is that quaint New England feel, but also be able to find areas for development so that we can bring that business, because without business. We're not that, that this town is that we won't be able to get those services that everybody wants because everybody will be carrying it on the backs of the other of, of the taxpayers, the residents, and we can't do that anymore. So that that is my one overarching goal is to create a business friendly town that has a solid economic development plan. That's it. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So a um, couple of things. One, um, like I had mentioned to, to Colleen, when we originally came up with the goals, you know, we looked at kind of grouping them together under community economic development, financial goals, policies, infrastructure, and um, new committees, which to me is kind of engagement. But well, I think maybe we kind of morphed that into we should morph that into engagement. Um, I agree we had a lot last time. We, we were very ambitious. I think we did a good job with all of our goals. We did a really good job, but um, being able to focus in a little bit more for a little less would be good. Um, and I like the idea of chunking them, saying, you know, what are the things that we really want to focus in on? But, I, you know, I, I struggle with I struggle with vagueness and stuff. And, and for me, all of this, everything that we're doing, we have to look at the balance of the entire town not just the special interest groups that are in our ears and not just the people who are talking to us about one thing and that, but every decision affects 15,000 people across the board. So we, we have to be cognizant, like if we were to go to a full-time fire department, it's millions of dollars from what John has told us, millions to do that. So we need to figure out if that's, if we're going to do that, where else are we going to give? Because if we up the budget by millions of dollars, we're we have to think of it with the lowest, the person who's struggling the most to stay here, whether or not this is going to push them out of town, you know, and somebody else moving in. I think the perception is a lot of the time, well, we just need to know what everybody wants and then we can do what people want. And, but that's not everybody. Like I get concerned when we start saying, 
we're going to do a like I think we should do some sort of a needs assessment, but I'm not interested in a needs assessment that isn't going to assess the needs of everybody in town. You know, if we're just putting something out like we have with the town manager thing, and we get 200 people, and we're all excited that we got 200 people. There's 15, there's 14,800 something people in this town. You know, 200 people. It's it's a, not even a microism of of the of of what we have in this town. So, you know, we. We all talk to people in town, you know, Sammy, you know, we get you know, a bunch of people in, into your store and that everybody's talking to us, but we need to, we, it needs to be all encompassing the whole town, because if you want to start talking about expanding our housing base and bringing in diversity in our housing stock and bringing in businesses and all of that, we have to make sure that we're not pushing certain people out to make it more accessible for other people. I hate nothing more than having a town that you have to only certain people can afford to live in. Um, you know, Holland didn't used to be like that. And I don't want us to get that way. So we have to be very cognizant of, of what we want to do, how we want to do it, which goals we want to put out there, what we want to focus on. And, and also balancing, as I'm sure you mentioned once before I came in, we can have all these lofty goals, but we're not the ones implementing them. So we need to be cognizant of how it's going to roll down, who's going to be doing it, what the services are, um, and, and what part of it we have to do, what's our lift in comparison to um, the lift that we're asking of, of our staff and everybody else. So I think the easiest, the best, the most important thing I think we have to really truly focus in on is economic development. We need to find a way to diversify our tax base. We need to find a way to get more housing options in town. We need to find a way of um, spreading that tax burden out over more people. So then we can look at what services we want to add in that. But the intent shouldn't be to get us back up to 37 mills. You know, we were lucky and we got everything that we wanted and we flew out, we developed TVA, we developed off of 69, we developed up by NERAC, we got businesses in, we got medical stuff in and we added know, $10 million to our tax base, that's the time to sit back and reflect then and say, okay, now we've changed the dynamic of our, our town. What services do we need to have to do that? Um, you, you can, we can want everything, but we have limited resources. And if we keep asking everybody for more and more resources, we're going to have less and less people <laughs> that can afford to live here. So um, economic development is big on me, on mine, um, across the board, accessibility, being financially cognizant and getting more people um, engaged. And I do think we have we have some opportunity, right? We have some substantial opportunity. We have four granted, it is extremely limited what we can spend that money on. It is not in any way, shape, or form that we can say, hey, we've got four million dollars, let's add 20 people, let's do this, let's do that. It's it's extremely limited what that money can be spent on. But we should be looking at that money as a strategic opportunity to create an environment that promotes commercial development, accessibility, and expansion of our town base, because we're not going to get that infusion of money again. So that has to be, as, as John said, you know, a big focus for us, a big focus on how we do that, how we do it in a way that everybody in this town is going to benefit. So I don't know. I, I think everybody's writing everything down. So I'm hoping yeah. second session is like everybody's stuff is up on a board and we can start kind of like breaking it down. Exactly. Like what does that fall under? What are our big chunks? What does it kind of fit? And then we can narrow down to um, an, a, an action plan from there. So I like all the ideas. I like listening to them. I'm writing them all down. Yeah. No, thank you, Councilor Nancy. And I was going to add, I think one thing, it's not so much a goal, but I think a value that I think most people on this council would agree to is beneficial is data driven decision making. Yes. So I think that's yeah, where yeah. That's where a potential, you know, <laughs> where you know a potential goal scale, realigning our vision and getting a community needs assessment would probably with the right funding, if we can use our soon to be new grants manager to help us go through that process, you know, we could have really overarching studies of you know what is the economic heartbeat of the town what is the general like demographics income like all the various factors we need to develop that vision and i think when we can rely on some of that data if we have it compiled and 
centralized in a single report that helps us also define our budget making decisions and other even just day to day week to week policy decisions we kind of use that thinking about the whole town so no i appreciate that that comment about the data that kind of at least rehashing what you said it's kind of data driven decision making yeah. is, is important um, are there any other counselors? Uh, Councillor Lucy, are you good for another round? I just I, we've already done two rounds, and we have a list. I think that we can get some people together to um, organize this list, um, put it into categories, and um, guess there's a lot of overlap, um, and and there's things that are you know can be put into categories together um, and accomplished at the same time. So, and I think we could also identify that there's a few things that need to get accomplished first. So I, I think we're ready to get working on that. Thank you, Councillor Colusi. So I was gonna say in part of the packet, there's, uh, if there's anyone else that is looking to speak before I open up public participation, because that is a, obviously an important part is we want the residents to give feedback on our goals and maybe things we didn't consider that, you know, could be put into, you know, having it on our meeting minutes when we reconvene next week, we can say, oh, you know, this resident included this. What do we all think about that? So getting that community input. While we're ultimately the decision makers, I think, like I think Councilor Duccio said, getting resident input is helpful for us to make our decisions. And it's not just 200 people or 13,000 or 1,300 people, or it's the whole 14 and a half, 15,000 people that help us guide our decisions. Uh, so. I'm kind of getting a general consensus. There's no other commentary needed. So I will open up for public comment with a three minute limit. If you are on Zoom, there's a raise hand icon at the bottom of your screen. Otherwise, if you're on the phone, you can hit star nine. And of course, if you have thoughts and would like to submit them at a later time, you can always email uh, towncouncil at colin.org. So with that being said, is there anyone from the public that would like to provide input? All right, I see Katie Murray. And, and also please include your uh, name and address for the record. Sure, Katie Murray, 8 Lisa Lane. Um, I thought this was a very interesting uh, discussion and I, I commend you guys for all the information that you uh, collaborated on here. There was a lot of collaboration. Um, my question, I really have a question and that is, you, all of you mentioned um, meeting the needs of our community. Um, and I'm just wondering how you determine those needs. I think it's a fair question. I don't know if, if, uh, Lisa, if you would like to kind of explain some of that in terms of the budget development, because I think that's usually one of the biggest documents that we use to kind of provide those needs to the residents. There, well, there's, there's several ways of identifying the, the community's needs. Um, you know, number one, yes, the budget document provides information on the basic services such as public safety, police, fire, um, trash removal, um, plant, public economic development, things like that. However, those are the standard services, snow removal, that we provide to the public. Other ways are finding out we would do community surveys, you'd engage in focus groups. If the, it depends on how deep you want to get to get that information. But you, you would get the community involvement, community engagement, um, inviting them to this meeting tonight. I thought that was a very good thing that you did that at least give people the opportunity to be involved, to share their ideas or concerns. Um, but you have to hear what they feel their needs are as well. Certainly, they're speaking to you and um, privately too, sending messages. But so that you know, you could do a community survey. Surveys don't always give you the best results; that they're limited. But you do get some information. Focus groups, like I said, or community meetings. Um, when you're doing, if you decide to move forward with redoing your vision and your mission, that's where they get involved. They you you invite them to those sessions you get their input and, and that's how i would go about it. i think you might be muted katie i don't know if you're still speaking or or if you have any additional input or questions or comments no i i um 
it sounded like Lisa had a number of ideas. And I guess the follow-up question is, how will this council identify community needs that you will then meet with your goals? So I think that's that's a good question. I think maybe there was some discussion by Councillor Pelusi and a few other individuals about maybe a community needs assessment uh, being carried out. Um, I think there's probably some more information we need about that that becomes a goal, uh, but I think it's an ongoing discussion that we would have to have. Thank you. Thank you, Katie. Is there anyone else from the public that would like to provide input? And of course, as I said before, if, uh, if you have thoughts and you want to send them after the fact, please feel free to email towncouncilatcon.org because then we'll all get them and we'll go to Lisa and that can help us uh, with our decision making as we go forward with our next session on, I believe, the 6.30 on the 15th. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> Yeah, I, I just want to sort of follow up on that where I think uh, uh, Ms. Murray brings a, a good uh, brings up a good issue, but it's also something where there's other commissions that we deal with as well, that we have a lot of different groups that hear from their constituents and that also report back to the council and have input. And that's where we get a lot of our information as well. We get it from, uh, you know, from, we, we all have liaison roles. We all report back. To the, to the the town council as far as what some of the concerns are from the uh, from the groups that we're liaisons to, so I think that's also another spot where it may not come directly to us uh, during public comment, but it's things that we hear as in our other roles as the liaisons as parts of these other boards, which we bring back to the council and that we uh, that we build on as well. So I think there's a lot of avenues for for us to hear things other than just within this confines of meetings such as this. Okay, thank you, Councillor Luba. So, not seeing any other hands raised for public participation, I'm going to give it going <laughs> once, going twice. Seeing none, I would entertain a motion to adjourn at 8 01 p.m. So moved. So moved by Councillor Nuccio. Sec Seconded by Brenda Felusi. Did I beat Brenda? <laughs> yeah, con oh, con sorry. I can't, it, it cut out. So, all right. So, all those in favor will go do a roll call vote. So, Councillor Pelusi? Aye. Councillor Utrecht? Aye. Councillor Luba? Aye. Councillor Duccio? Aye. Aye. Councillor Khan? Aye. And I am an aye, says so unanimous. Thank you all. Have a great day.